Hello and welcome to this Facebook Live event hosted by the Independent Education Union. As you're probably aware, the IEU is currently in dispute with the Catholic employers over the new Enterprise Agreement for Catholic Systemic Schools, especially regarding access to arbitration. Catholic employers are spreading misinformation about the progress of the agreement and the IEU would like to clarify what is actually occurring. I'm Megan Bruce and I'm here today with the IEU Secretary, John Quezzi, to answer some questions from members about this dispute. This is a Facebook Live event, which means if you have any questions for John, all you need to do is write them in the comments section and we'll do our best to answer as many as possible. So please don't be shy. We want to hear from you. John, thanks for your time today. Thanks, Megan. Look, we already have quite a number of questions sent through via email. So can I start with a couple of those? Sure. So does the union have an agreement with employers ready to put to the vote, John? Look, the, the short answer to that is no, we don't. Um, the last agreement that we saw was December the, uh, dated December the 2nd, although when we asked for a word version of that so that we could uh, uh, make some suggestions, uh, which was in June, we got a new version that was dated, I think, the 17th of February. But at this stage, the vast majority of things that we've talked about and we believe have agreed in principle are not included in a February the, uh, the 17th agreement. So there's absolutely nothing that has union endorsement that's ready to go to a vote. Thank you. So look, there's a member from Wollongong says that they have been asked to look at the existing dispute settling clause and wants to know how he can make a judgment about it. Well, look, that's a really good question because to make a judgment about something like that requires a pretty substantial knowledge of the law and the way the law is practiced. So the clause that exists at the moment looks quite innocuous, but there's a couple of things that people need to remember. The first is that that clause, when we agreed to it back in making the last agreement, we had an assurance from Catholic employers that it meant that either party could refer the matter to, um, to arbitration. Now, in March this year, in a dispute with the uh, Canberra Goulburn Diocese, they argued that the matter could not proceed to arbitration without their consent. That was the first time we were alerted to the fact that they changed their view. And from that moment onwards, we have been seeking a change to the, um, the existing clause. Another thing happened in the middle of the year, around about June. The Fair Work Commission gave a ruling about the interpretation of um, arbitration clauses. And what they in essence said was that the Fair Work Commission would not arbitrate a matter unless both parties agreed to arbitration, unless there was a quite explicit statement in an award or agreement that said that either party could refer the matter. And that's the thing we're, se we're seeking. So if you don't know about that, um, uh, that ruling from the full bench, you can't make an informed judgment based on the existing clause. This one looks like it's come from the Parramatta Diocese and says that the person who spoke to them in a staff meeting said that if the union gets its way, any member could be up for thousands of dollars defending themselves if someone takes them to arbitration. Is that correct? Uh, no, that would be, um, uh, look, I would recommend that whoever wrote that or whoever um, uh, said that have a little bit of a look at the Eighth Commandment, the one about false witness, the one about making up porkies. That is just a blatant lie. Arbitration is where the parties to the agreement, and the parties to the agreement, in our case, are the union, and either individual employers or groups of employers. And what happens in arbitration is that only those, um, uh, those people are involved. If there is a non-union member and the non-union member somehow takes something to uh, uh, the Fair Work Commission, then obviously if they want to get um, uh, advice, um, 
from legal representatives, then they pay for that. But largely, arbitration is about a dispute regarding the interpretation or application of an agreement. So, for example, if something in the agreement, such as um, uh, progression along a salary scale, um, it's quite clear. We argue that someone should have progressed at a particular point. The employers say we don't agree, can't conciliate the matter. We can have that arbitrated. So it, it doesn't. It, the union might be taking a matter on behalf of the member, but the member is not involved to the extent of any uh, uh, any court costs and the like. And arbitration is essentially free. You can go there by yourself. I could appear in the in, in an arbitration matter. Okay, we've got one from Karen, and she's asked this question on Facebook. Um, we were told yesterday that the SCS hasn't changed the interpretation. It has been this way for seven years. Is that correct? Well, Sydney Catholic Schools may not have changed the interpretation, but the Fair Work Commission has. Um, and this is about the Fair Work Commission. This is entirely about um, um, changing something to meet changing circumstances, something that teachers and support staff do every day. Um, there is a need to change because circumstances have changed. Now, I'll give you this in analogy, and this is one for long-standing cricket people. You might re recall um, a, a notorious cricket game where one of the chapel boys bowled a ball underarm. There was nothing in the rules that said you couldn't do that, but then it was done. It was a dreadful thing. The rules were changed to prohibit that. So what we've got at the moment is not so much the rules changing, but the interpretation of those rules changing. So the Fair Work Commission has said, as I um, indicated earlier, that it will not arbitrate matters unless both parties agree or there is a specific statement to say that. The fundamental thing that people, the, the question that people should be asking is why does the union want to change the clause? Yet we don't make any apology for the fact that we want it changed. It needs to, it needs to reflect the new reality. No one's accusing Sydney Catholic Schools of changing um, an interpretation. In fact, the only ones who have changed the interpretation is the Archdiocese of Canberra and, and Goulburn. They were the ones in March who told us we couldn't take a matter to arbitration. Uh, ultimately, that was, that was resolved without arbitration, but they were the ones who told us that we couldn't. We then went to the, um, uh, the Catholic Commission for Employment Relations and sim simply said, is this new? Um, interpretation, the interpretation and the decision of all 11 dioceses. We never got an answer to that beyond them saying they were very happy with the current clause. Well, of course they are. The current clause would be would be interpreted by the, um, the Fair Work Commission from June onwards as you don't have access to arbitration unless both sides agree. Okay, well, um, I've got a question here and it says, my principal said the agreement was finalised, so should I stop collecting signatures on the petition? Can I? Um, the petition is totally separate. What we have at the moment is an impasse. We have a situation where we want this clause reviewed uh, and some uh, a few words added, perhaps. Um, the Catholic employers have said no. Uh, so what we are doing is we are now asking our members to um, sign a petition so that we can show each and every one of the 11 directors of Catholic education, not only the strength of feeling, but the depth of feeling, because we believe that the vast majority of um, teachers and support staff support the union position. And those who don't, simply don't understand. Uh, and, and look, this, is, this can be pretty complex stuff. So I would say, absolutely not. Keep getting signatures on the petition uh, and put some pressure on employers. So actually, that leads to the next question. Well, um, some people are asking, can they get into trouble if they sign the petition? Absolutely not. Look, you, you still have some industrial rights, and those include freedom from being picked on for standing up for your few industrial rights. Um, I could talk about things like adverse action, which is a, a legal term. Employers simply cannot legally take any action against someone because they are claiming a right to which they are entitled. If they do that, they can be prosecuted. And certainly it would appear from that question that it was a principal um, who said such a thing. 
um, I would urge most principal, every principal, to before they utter comments such as that, to um, uh, to go and get their own advice because they wouldn't want to put themselves at uh, at risk of the unlimited damages that exist under adverse action. It, it would just be a dumb position to be in. No, you cannot get into any trouble, and if anyone tries to intimidate you to uh, not pass around a petition or um, uh, not to um, not to send it off to the union. Let me know, John at ieu.asn.au. We won't tolerate that sort of interference. So let's get back to arbitration. Here's one, um, another one in relation to that. Why didn't the union raise the issue of arbitration in other agreements, like the principals agreement? Oh, very simple. Goes to answers I gave before. Uh, we finalised the principals agreement. Firstly before the Archdiocese of Canberra indicated that they were reneging on the arrangement that we had. And secondly, before the decision of the full bench in, in, in June. Um, it's the full bench decision in June that warns us, if you like, warns all unions, that in fact they need to have statements in their agreement that, um, um, that give either party the right to refer a matter to, um, uh, to arbitration uh, or the full bench won't hear it without, um, um, without that, um, that guarantee. And look, there's another dimension to why we want arbitration. It goes to incentive. Arbitration is not a place you go to first. There's mediation, there's conciliation, then if all of those things fail, there's arbitration. But if there is no umpire at the end of it, there's no incentive, no requirement really for people to take the conciliation seriously. You can simply talk around, keep coming back, have more discussions, talk a bit more, and just keep talking in circles forever until either the matter then gets um, worn out or referred to a court. But not every matter can go to court. For example, um, protecting people's RFF, issues around class sizes, these are not issues that can be referred to the um, Federal Circuit Court, certainly not easily. I'm pretty sure they would um, they would not be interested in it. Now we know at the moment that Catholic employers have applied to the um, uh, Fair Work Commission to stop the union holding a ballot for um, protected action. Uh, their view is, oh well, matters can go to courts. Um, we also have a matter at the moment where the um, uh, the Sydney Catholic Schools have put in an objection to a matter going to court. They're arguing the court doesn't have the jurisdiction to hear it. So it's all very well for them to say. You don't need arbitration, you can go to court. But then they stand in the way of that. They don't want to be accountable to anyone. Um, okay, so do other unions, this is from Christine, do other New South Wales unions have a clause in their enterprise agreements that allow them to seek arbitration from the Fair Work Commission without the other party's consent? Look, there are a few, um, although within New South Wales there are a number of unions that are still governed by the New South Wales Industrial Commission. The best example of that is the Teachers' Federation. They are not subject to um, 